Jim is the president of the California Pioneers of Santa Clara County. The board of directors of the Preservation Action Council of San Jose sits on the history committee of the Willow Glen Neighborhood Association and is also the co-author of the book Touring Historic Willow Glen. And I caught up with Jim at the archeological site on the Guadalupe River near Alma and Highway 87. Jim, can you tell us about some of the earliest sustainable communities here in Willow Glen? Sure, uh, our earliest communities, sustainable communities, would date back to our original inhabitants who came here over 6,500 years ago. They were the Tamian people who were part of the Ohlone tribe. They were hunter-gatherers and their religion worshiped nature. So they were very sensitive to their environment. They tried to take no more than they needed and they were hunter-gatherers. So they, they, they didn't work the lands, they, they ate the local um, foods that came from grizzly to elk to deer, and they fished the creeks and ate berries and acorns. What sustainable building techniques did they use? Well, when they built their homes, which were referred to as, they we refer to as wikiups, they built the framework from willow branches, which were plentiful here in Willow Glen, as the name indicates. They weaved in grasses uh, into it, thatching it, and covering, in some cases, uh, the exterior huts with mud for additional protection against the elements. They cut a hole at the top to allow the smoke from their fires to escape. With the uh, influence of uh, Europeans moving in, how, how did those uh, building techniques change? Well, they changed drastically over time. The first Europeans to come to this area were the Spaniards who came in 1777 to establish Miss and Santa Clara and the Pueblo de San Jose, Alta California's first city. They built their homes from adobe bricks. They brought that uh, technology with them from Spain up through Mexico, they, where they would pour bricks into a roughly 11 by 22 by four inch uh, form and dry them in the sun. And that, that, those adobe bricks were made from hay, sand, clay, and in some cases, horse manure. Do we have any buildings that are currently in existence that uh, are in Willow Glen that represent that period? We've got an excellent example right here in, in, on Lincoln Avenue, thanks to John Brazzoni. We have a, a home that was built by Roberto Bellarmino, a neophyte Indian from the Mission in, in the late 1830s. He built this for his home, again using the, the adobe uh, practice of building his home. This home was later adapted as the Americans came to this area building with a wood frame construction. So there's a small 18 by 18 section of the home that still remains with the newer additions that were done in the um, second and third quarter of the 19th century by Spaniards and Americans. As we move forward on the timeline, can you give me some examples of uh, uh, sustainable building practices from the uh, early to mid 1900s? We, we do, Kevin. As, as we move up Lincoln Avenue in, in the downtown between uh, Minnesota and Willow Street. Uh, originally at the turn of the century it was lined with residences. And as the needs changed in that area, the homes needed to be adapted. In some cases they moved those homes. They, the, they didn't have a disposable society at that time, so they, they knew the value of the building materials that went into building those residences. So in some cases they moved them a short distance away onto neighboring streets to be reused as homes. And in other cases they adaptively reused the homes on their original sites. Examples are the Buffington House, which later became uh, a real estate office and a, a mortgage location. And we have the, the old Blaine's Lighting Store, which added on to the front of the residence and made it a retail center for, for lighting fixtures. Are there any recent examples of uh, sustainable building practices used today? We've got an excellent example on, on Hicks Avenue, which uh, the residence of Noel Cross, a local architect. This technology has almost made come full circle from, from uh, the Roberto Bellamino uh, adobe. He built his home uh, from earthen materials, uh, combining them with, with them with a cementitious material, except in this case, he sprayed them uh, onto metal forms under high pressure, much the way they build, uh, make a swimming pool today with gunite. He also incorporated into the structure of his home, reusing building materials from other um, buildings. He incorporated mantles from Europe, stone mantles from Europe. He incorporated uh, timbers that were taken from the old town and countryside when they built Santana Row. He's incorporated uh, solar panels to provide his electricity and a geothermal pump 
to provide the heating of his home. That's great. Jim, I want to thank you for coming in today. I really appreciate you taking the time and, and giving us a walk through a little bit of uh, the sustainable buildings in Willow Glen through history. Thanks, Kevin. It's well, my, my, my pleasure, and it's great to be here in the middle of, believe it or not, downtown Willow Glen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.